Good morning. Good morning. This presentation is about uh, the complete, uh, one complete solution using MicroTik for internet service provider. Uh, VPNet is a telecommunications operator in Brazil who uses only MicroTik in all of his network. I will introduce and show how we implement a border, backbone, access, and CP with MicroTik, IPv6, IPv4, CGNAT, and KOS rules and, and firewall. This presentation is a tutorial on how VPNet implements and completes an extremely functional solution with MicroTik. My name is Flavio Camacho. I am an engineer with master degree in telecommunication engineering. I do a lot of presentations and a lot of moons for more than 10 years. I have all of the certifications of MicroTik and I am a trainer. Let me see the MicroTik technologies. What's the importance of MicroTik for an internet provider? It was used for user authentication, bandwidth control over these users, network routing, OSPF and BGP, customer management, service quality, monitoring, and backbone, access network, and distribution network. To start an internet service provider, you need internet, you need something in the middle, between before your customers. MicroTik do all of the things between the internet and the customers. When you receive a link, you need a tool to share this link and to configure this link. You need BGP and routing. MicroTik provides this, this implementation. When you implement security against external and attacks from hackers and from your own customers, you need a firewall in your internet service provider. MicroTik has this function. You have to authenticate users and block defaulters. PPPoE, hotspot, MicroTik do it. You need to control the band and the plans of each client. Kiwis, MicroTik. Server for centralized authentication on hardware server, MicroTik has in user manager. Internal network routing, OSPF, MicroTik. Control of quality, quality of service, MicroTik. Monitoring devices, manager, MicroTik, the dude. Network interfaces, fiber, Ethernet, wireless, everything. Build a network to take the internet to the customers. Radios, antennas, fiber converters, switches. MicroTik has all on a unique and extremely versatile platform. Nothing from multiple vendors with different solutions that are difficult to manage and integrate. Let me see the VIPNet network design. We have four levels network levels in VIPNet. The first level was the border, where the we used BGP, NAT, log, firewall, QS, and QS. And the equipment was the CCS, CCR routers and servers. We have the second level, who was the backbone, where we have only routing and QS. 
for backbone, we use fibers, point to point, and radios. We have the network level access, where we, have, we use PPOE servers, Fire, QoS, and QE. For that, we use fiber to the home, hotel boards, and APIs, and CPS in the clients, where the function was PPU clients, Wi-Fi, DHCP, Slack, and the equipment was the smaller and the cheaper one, hype lights, SGT, or anything like this. We have the internet and the border of micro of VPNet network, where we have BGP equipment. Service of files, web servers, database servers, CGNAT servers, and FIRO using CCRs. The next level was the backbone, where we have a POP, point of presence. It can be a tower or not. And these towers, these POPs, was connected by radio to other POPs to leave the internet to the other places or connected by fiber. We have these two kinds of connections, wireless and fiber. And one pop can have wireless and fiber at the same time. Or we have pops who receive wireless from one pop and fiber to another pop. In this case, we have a, a ring. This ring gives the company a lot of uh, good work because we make resilient to fail. And other pops can receive other links, wireless or fiber. And with this, we do a backbone, a network connecting different points of presence with fiber or, or wireless to has a access network. In the access network, we have different access, wireless, where we can put an uh, access point, and via wireless has a CPE with a client. We have clients with wireless. We have clients with fiber, and clients with Ethernet connection. This here was a map from the year 2017 in Rio de Janeiro. Each point was a tower or a points of presence of the company in, the, in this year. This city was Rio de Janeiro. This state was Rio de Janeiro. VIPnet in, in 2009 has had 34 active network devices. Four years later, we have 194. And in this year of this photo, we have 1,199 different active network devices. In this year, 118 POPs, and we give service of internet for 17 cities. The internet was an ex excellent product to sell. Everybody needs internet, and day by day, year by year, more people will need more and more. Because of that, we grow too much. And we start to use Microtik in 2007. In the border of the network of VIPnet, we have the internet. But we not, don't have only one internet service. We have more than one. We have two different internet links who was connected to suites, to two different suites. And this suite was connected to different BGP border routers for redundance. The firewall was the same thing. He was connected to a suite where he can open in all the links and all BGP servers. And CGNAT was the same thing. This is the, the how we implement our border for maximum uh, resilient resistance. This is the switch we use in the, in the border. No, no, this is the routers you use in the border. The routers was used to BGP, Faro, and CGNAT. But each router, only one service, not all service in, in, the, in the router. 
This is the switch we use in the now. And now the VIPnet backbone. First, you have a link. Now you have a border or a data center where you receive this link and administrate this link. But for an internet service provider, you need to go with this link to the home of your clients. And for that, you need to do a backbone. We have a backbone with a lot of different technologies. One is radio. We have a backbone radio. What's good in backbone radio? He has a good transport capacity, very excessive prices, cheaper than fiber. It was, has, uh, you have, have con uh, OSPF routing in these radios of MicroTik. And it is quick to install. To put a link of 500 meters, 2 kilometers, 10 kilometers, it was easy. One point, one, another point, two radios, in a few minutes you can do it. And you can go to big distances using these equipments. It was the equipment we used, the sleeve and the radio. This radio from Microtik can give you up to 1.3 gigabits per second. It was a lot of bands. Depending on how many users, customers you have, it was much more than the necessary. This is an example in Gambia, in a, in a country in Africa, where we do a link from 75 kilometers and near to one gigabit of, of bands with less than $800. This is the designed Band. The equipment was the metal, microchip. This is the antenna where we have live, see some slides ago. The distance, 75 kilometers, reliable. And seven meters was the first Fresnel zone. You need one tower with only seven meters not a giant tower to put these antennas. This is the design of the, the link. It was near to the Gambia's river, and with an equipment extremely cheaper. When you have an internet service provider, it was very important, go to far and far and far to take more and more and more clients. And Radio was an excellent choice to use. One radio point to point for Gina Dis, for an example, it was 14 kilometers with near to one gigabit of, of bandwidth. Or with 45 kilometers with 300 meters. Everybody talks about fiber. Yes, fiber was the future. But it wasn't interesting. Forget the, the radio. We start with the radios. We start with wireless internet service provider. We go to the fiber, yes. But we understand fiber was the best. But we have a big space to work with wireless, too. And these radios we are looking was from backbone of the network. And this equipment, only $175 to do a link of 45 kilometers. It was no nothing, it was cheaper than this. And this equipment used a licensed band, six gigahertz of band. No problems with interference. Another equipment of MicroTik used in backbone nearly to $200 uh, dollars and two gigabytes. Uh, Vibnet has backbone in wireless and a backbone in fiber. In fiber, we do our backbone. Fiber is the future, it has no escape. But fiber, no interference, high transport capacity, more than one gigabit only fiber to work very well. 
but high cost of deployment. It wasn't cheaper fiber. And the maintenance was very, the cost of maintenance was high because you need a machine to work with fiber, to splitters, uh, and uh, lots of other equipments. In backbone, we use only point-to-point -point, uh, connections. And for this, this SFP, for an example, gives us eight kilometers of range. You can have a point of presence in one point, only one fiber, and eight kilometers more, you have another point of your network. Or with this one here, with 10 gigabytes of network. You have a backbone with 10 gigabytes with this other, we use these two, these two kinds of SCFP. In the backbone, we use the fiber switch to receive. Each pop has a fiber switch connected to one other pop or to the border. This switch has 16 SFP. You can put 16 different pops connected with this one here. And your, your network grows a lot. This is an example. You have two switches, one fiber connecting two switches, two SFPs, and with only two SFPs, two switches and a fiber, not a lot of money, you can go eight kilometers with 1.25 gigabytes. The fiber cable has a lot of fibers, not only one. We are using only one fiber of the cable in this backbone. But the network grows, grows, more clients, more clients, more, more demand, more bands. What we do? We are using only one fiber. With another fiber and another pair of SFPs, you can go to 2.5 gigabytes. Extremely simple, few minutes to, to, to install and to grow the, the network. With one cable like this with 24 fibers, you can go to 30 gigabytes of backbone transport. And if you use this one, each one gives you 10 gigabytes of bandwidth. With 24, more than the necessary now. The VPNet backbone was basically radius point to point and fiber point to point using SFP and switches. We have the network of access, the access network. The access ne network, we have five different scenarios. We have residential wireless clients. We have Ethernet resident clients. We have resident fiber clients. We have corporate fiber clients and corporate radio clients. For each scenario, we use different equipment, different technologies to give the service who was necessary. In the first scenarios, where we have the residential wireless clients, we have a customer. In this customer houses or company, we install an antenna, a CPE, with, with, where we have a PPU OE client and NV2. It was very important to stability of their network, use only one equipment or all equipment compatible with the same technology. The best one now is NV2. And we have an AP, an access point, in the tower, in a POP. This AP was a PPOE server, QoS, routing OSPF, firewall, QE, and NV2. This is the scenario of wireless connection residential. This AP was connected to the backbone, and the backbone connected to internet. This is the access network for clients wireless. This is the equipment, more interesting, more well used. 
an APA for microtique, you have two different kinds with uh, 50, uh, smaller or more DBEs depending on the plan, the access area you are working. We have these two equipments. And this here was an example of point to multi point wireless. With a cheaper X60, we can go with two kilometers and give near to one gigabit. It was much more than the necessary. With a bigger distance, eight kilometers, 300 megabits. With equipment better, with better antenna, like in Dinadish, we can go far. Eight kilometers with 800 megabits or up to 20 kilometers with 300 megabits. Lots of clients of wireless we have using this technology. The other kinds of scenario we have was the residential clients using access network Ethernet. We have a customer. In the house of the customer, we put a CP, Ethernet CP, like Haplite. This Haplite does a PPUS uh, client, and it was a uh, wireless API for the client, only for the client. It was connected by Ethernet network cable to a power box. This power box do a PPUA server, firewall, QoS, routing OSPF, Kiwi, and voltage monitor. This is the photo of the power box. And the power box was connected to VIPnet's backbone, who was connected to internet. Let me see. This is the power box. In the power box first Ethernet one, we come with power in to energize this equipment. And in Ether 5, with power off, we come out with energy to another power box, located 19 meters to the other. In the first one, we come to with energy. And in the Ether 5, we come with power, power out, PPA out, more 90 meters, another one. POA in, POA out. And with this, we go moving, 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 lots of kilometers. These three ports here was used for clients. I can have three clients at each 19 meters, nine, 90 meters. And in the other, I have more and more. And you go moving and put more and more clients. If you have more than three clients in one space, you can put another power box. You use the Ether 4 to energize a second power box. You will have two clients in the first power box and four clients in the second power box at the same point. This is the foot, the line in where the energy comes the power off to the other uh, how the, uh, power box and the clients. And this is a photo of how it works. Each one of these was a power box. One power box, cable to this house, another Cable, Ethernet cable, power box, Ethernet cable, power box, one house, cross the, the street, another power box, and moving, moving. And you could go to all of a city, lots of, no, your imagine was more important. In this case here, we see two houses at the same power box. We can have up to three without uh, a second power box. And in one point, you put one like this, where you put the energy. The energy, the, your batteries, your, your no-breaks, UPSs, to 
give energy to all of this network. This is extremely cheaper. If you would like to start a network, nothing was cheaper than this. And we use Powerbox, but you can use a simple switch. It will be cheaper than using Powerbox. You lost management, but you reduce your cost. The third scenario was residential fiber. In residential fiber, we have a customer, uh, ONU, in the customer, connected to a OLT, who was connected to a router board who does the PPOA server. Fire, OQS, Houting, Kiwi, and go to the backbone. The connection was from one fiber. In connection from fiber, you can use this equipment, another power box, but not a power box, with a fiber in. You have a building, three, three apartments in the building, not necessary, lots of NU. We use only one and pass Ethernet cables between the clients in the same place, in the same building, in the same uh, apartment, in different apartments. More clients with only one fiber and only one SFP. And we have another scenario with corporate clients. It was the most, most important clients the, who pays more and needs a different kind of service. These clients has a dedicated service. We have only a CPA customer in the customer who do PPOA, Fire, QS, and others, and one dedicated fiber directly from the customer to my switch in the pulp. Clients use fiber to the home. One fiber, one, one fiber, lots of splits to attend the clients. The corporate clients know. They use only one fiber dedicated, connected directly to the switch in the pulp. The switch was connected to the router, who was the concentrator, where the services work, and backbone, connection to backbone. The last scenario was the clients with corporate radios. Oh, fiber was very interesting. More, but one client who needs internet 100% of the time need more than one internet link and has two different internet links, all fiber. If one car in front of the, the building of the, your client shots the, the fiber, all the fibers will be destroyed at the same time. The more interesting scenario was if you have a link in fiber and a backup link with another equipment, with another with radio was excellent for the second line, line. Better than two fibers or one fiber and one Ethernet link, for an example, because these two links use the same, has the same risk to stop in front of your house was the point of fail, who was the two, 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 two different fibers to the same point. Oh, one fiber was to the left and one from the right. Okay, but in this point, these two fibers was in the same point. And if this point goes down, your internet fails. We have a lot of space in Brazil, and I imagine in all of the world, to the links in radio, corporate living dedicated. And this is the scenario we would have. The customer has a wireless CP who was configured as a bridge, point to point, not point to multi point. And in the tower, in the pop, we have a second who was dedicated only for this client. With two antennas, two directional antennas, you have a good signal, the best signal, because one was directly connected to the other, to only one. And you have a good service. In the wireless, we have the other service, and the pop connected to Backbone. This is the corporate radius clients, who pays a lot for this kind of service. The VPNet has a distribution of VPs, 
we use the RFC to distribute. The first we have uh, the, the first part use it for customers. Each concentrator receives one network like this, who can get uh, up to 1,000 clients and can be summarized easily by OSPF. Example, concentrator one. This network starts, finish. And one part of the network we use only for address the networks and the routers. OK. Each public IP has 1,000 ports associated with the IP of the clients. This association is fixed, so it's easy to log and locate the client who has a problem with the police or something like this. Public IP. One, I use it for an example, 192.0.2.1. We'll use the first 1,000 ports the second IP, the other 1,000 ports, associated to one of the IPs uh, of CGNAT. Distribution of IPs. I can go to the first, up to the 64, because it was only 65,000 uh, ports in each IP. I can use only 64 IPs. Recommendation of RFC. I use for all of the people. Residential and business, the first option. And this is the how we can use to do easy to understand the, the IP and the clients. The first octet was 100. The second and is, it can be from 64 to 95, 31 possibilities. The second one, 0 to 99, 100 possibilities. And the last one, 1 to 61, 65, 64. 64 possibilities. All with this, this sequence, we can have nearly two, 200 mil, uh, million, 200,000 users. Sorry for the English. And we associate. All of my, our clients have IPv6 and IPv4. All of the network has IPv6. And all clients receive. If the client will use the IPv6 or no, it was a problem of the clients. But all of the network uses, and all the clients receives an IPv6. And the IPv6 was like this. To be easy to understand, if I know the IPv4 of the clients, I easily understand the IPv6 because they were very similar. Example, if the IPv4 of the client was 164.01, the IPv6 was 64.00.01 with the mask of the client. CPA customer premises. We see the data center, the backbone, access, and the last one was the CPA of the clients. The CPA is important in each client for management, to isolate the clients from the rest of the network, to implement the bandwidth and firewall controls directly in client's home. With this, your backbone stays more clear. Because all of the, the hard work was done in your clients. You open the file in your clients. You, it was, the bandwidth was controlled in your clients. Your clients goes to the backbone only with the bands who can, he, he has. Most people control the bands only in the end of the backbone, nearly to internet. But when you do it, the clients can use all of your network with 100% of bands up to the, the border of your network. Only one client can, can go down your network if he, he has a virus or a bad idea. We implement a CPA because of that, to start the, the, the fire in the client, in the client's house. And you can give a wireless to add value. 
we mark the packets of the clients in the clients one with the QS. And this customer premises, uh, CPS was very cheaper nowadays. And this CPS gives to your clients graphical service. Because Microtik has graphics, you can, can see the, the bandwidth he was using, time he uh, accessed the equipment. Each residential client has a CPA client, light. The CPA works as a PPOE client to authenticate the user. The, the, the network, between the access network, haven't any EP works only in PPPOE, without EP in interfaces. The one interface of your client has only PPPOE clients installed, and in access point, or the first router, it was only PPPOE server active, no EPs active. And the CPA has another user facility, was the DHCP server. For the client, we give the DHCP automatically, not necessary to configure manually. We do a personalization of the CPA for the client can access and see only the options he needs to configure, like the Wi-Fi network, uh, some firewall networks op options was disponible for the clients. The client can change the DHCP EPs for the, his network intern without call the support of the company. We have a wireless, wi pre-configured to easy, helps the clients. And we implement this like in the, in the router, to give the IP to the clients, IPv6 to the clients. So, to be easier, each IP in the router of the client was associated with one port. Because all clients tell, oh, open port 80, open port 22, open. The port was open and redirected directly to these, to, to these EPs. The client only needs to put one of these EPs in the network device who needs one of these ports. For the other equipment, the DHCP gives the IP from 200 to 253. And the other IP was associated to designated ports. And the gateway was the 24. This is the equipment used for this. One equipment with less than $20. All the features, all the help you give, it, it was very cheap to put one in each client. Very, very interesting. It was used in home Ethernet clients. In clients who was used fiber, we use this other one. We can use the X. The X was better, but more expensive. Or the GS, who was very cheaper, but it was only a switch. Wireless clients use this equipment. Different equipments for different distances. If the client was less than eight kilometers, we can use a new X60. If it was more than eight, we can use LHG and more distance, more equipment, different equipment antennas for different distances. The Japon, Microtix Japon, and Sejanat. We have the network of the customers, who was RFC 1918, who was private IP 192.88.0, was the uh, microchip padron, uh, the, the full. In the customer's PC, we have the CPA who gives this IP for the SP for the clients and has a carrier network to the network, to the backbone, to transport this. In the border, we have a Sejanat router who changed it for a public IP and goes to the internet. Internet, BGP, we have one Sejanat for each 4,000 clients. Sejanat was very expensive in 
networking processor for the router. We use lots of different CISNATs, one for each block of network, of, of clients, like this. The firewall, we have two firewalls in the network of VPNet. One firewall connected to the customers, to control the customers, and another firewall with the border control the internet. In the middle, in our backbone, not firewall, not necessary, because all traffic was organized, was filtered, and was controlled. It was good because all of your routers in the network works better, because all of the trash you take out before goes to the backbone. The, firewall in, the first firewall was works or in the access point or in the power box. And the second firewall works in a CCR near to the border. The, the firewall in the first connected direct to the client wasn't necessary a big equipment because you have one, two clients in this equipment. You have lots of network uh, or firewall rules and it works very well. In the network, in the border of the net, you need an equipment very bigger, very ex more expensive and more efficient for, because the traffic was bigger. In this point, we use a CCR. It was only to remember, it was a good place to everybody do, we do the anti-spoof uh, network control. We drop all packages if it comes from the first firewall, and the EP wasn't one of the delegated to this client. If any package comes to the first firewall and the EP wasn't from the, this network, it was dropped. The same thing in the border. If any package goes, tries to go out of my network and it wasn't from my network, it was dropped. The bogons was filtered in the, in the firewall two, coming in and come out. And each router only accepts connections from the other routers or from my management EP. I have a group of uh, employers in a network, a specific network use it to access and manage the equipment. My customers with his IP was impossible to access any equipment in all of the network. Only the management IP or the other routers. It was another filter input. And remember, all of these network filters must can be twice. One in IPv4 firewall and Everything one more time in IPv6 firewall. Because com the, network has, the network has distributed in all equipments, you need to do two firewall, different firewalls configuration. QoS. In VPNet, we have five different classes of service. The first class of service was monitoring. At this class, we have the network of monitoring and the routers. This class has the bigger priority. The second class was the VoIP. At this class, we have the VoIP servers. The third class was VIP. At this class, we have the clients with full guarantee of bands and the more important cl uh, clients. We have one class uh, named business with companies and residential. Residential was the customers with the low ticket, small priority. If you lost, no problem. No impact in your country, in your company. This is the classes. The first class monitoring has a max limit small, but the limited was the same as the small limit and the priority was two. This package was marked with a type of service, two, in the package. The second one was the class VoIP. It was, the max limit was medium, not too big, but the 
there was the same as limited for 100% of guarantee. And priority three. And this package was marked as a type of service tree. The other class, VIP, is variable because I have clients with same 100 megabits, 20 megabits, different bandwidths. So the max limit was variable. But the limited was the same as the max limit. 100% will be guaranteed. It was priority five and package uh, type of service five. The business client has max limits, uh, different maximum limit because we have a lot of plans, different plans. But 50% of this max limit was guaranteed. And the residential, 25%. If has been. The why I use type of service? Because type of service was one flag into the IP package. The other queues, the, the other uh, quality of service uses, works only into the router. But I need to do the quality of service from one point to the network to the other point to the network to guarantee all of the traffic. Because of that, I need to mark the packet with one mark who can go out of the router and continues for all of the network. And type of service was used exactly because of that. It wasn't, uh, each company can do like he would like. Here is the customer, and his package has one mark, who can go to all of the my network, all of my routers, and all of, we know this package comes from this kind of service, this kind of client, of this point. And I have a VoIP, a VoIP server. I give to my clients not only internet, but I give telephone too. It gives, you, you have a, a big network. If your client can pay you for network, internet, and for telephone, it was good. More money and nothing more to do. But VoIP to works very well. I use the QS for my server. It works only for my server, not for any VoIP in the network. My VoIP works well because I mark based. I, I use the, the mark the mark based on my VoIP server's IP. If the package was coming and the source address was my VoIP server, he will go in the QoS tunnel. If the customers goes to my VoIP server. The destination address is my VoIP server. This package will go in the manage or VoIP. But any other VoIP will not get QoS. Works normally. Customer goes with his uh, source address, goes to the router. The router marks the package and gives the package to the backbone. Internet to customers. The package comes to internet. And the first router marks the package before gives to the backbone. The client has QS from client to internet and internet to client. In my network, all of the clients has guarantee of service. Because of that, I mark the packets in the border and in the access point. For this, we use PPUA with address list. This is an example of the uh, VoIP server type of services equipment. No, another example of the configuration of, of VoIP server package. This is only a tutorial for do the, mark, uh, the quality of service. Remember, in EPv6, we need to do all of the same network uh, quality of service because we 
do quad offset for EPV6 and for EPV6. EPV4 and EPV6. And the VPNet company started its operation in 2004. In 2007, we started using MicroTik. In 2017, we have 4,000 customers using only MicroTik radios and routers. We are the success story, and MicroTik is part of that. Thank you.